Hello, and welcome to our latest video chat in the Money Show Expert Interview Series. I'm Mike Larson, Editor-in-Chief of Money Show, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jeff Hirsch, Editor-in-Chief of the Stock Traders Almanac and Almanac Investor. Jeff, thanks for taking some time out to do this conversation. Great to be with you, Mike. Thanks for having me. All right, great. Let's start with the big picture, right? I mean, you and I have spoken recently in New York and elsewhere about the, the generally bullish market backdrop, uh, in your opinion. So I guess I'll start by asking you, what's driving your optimism here? What do you see that, that that's looking good for 2023 so far? Well, I mean, it, it goes back to 2022 and it um, emulates from our um, basic you know, foundation of cycles and seasonal patterns. And the fact that last year was the midterm year, the four-year cycle, a very typical midterm year bear market. I contend we saw the low in October. A lot of people think it's going to get tested or even breached here. Um, and then also seasonally, we had that very typical October um, bottom and a very typical seasonal pattern and then a fourth quarter rally. So the, the, the framework, the foundation was set by the cycles and the seasonals. And then we start getting some, some solid numbers, you know, out of the GDP and growth. Yes, there's some other questionable numbers, um, you know, from some earnings people are concerned about, which forecasted by, you know, other groups, uh, uh, Wall Street, you know, firms that expect that to trough off around mid-year. Market anticipates that stuff. Fed's slowing down, looking like they're going to, you know, pause maybe two or three more. You know, we'll see what, what happens. I know there's a lot of <clears throat> concern with headline inflation, but, you know, from our vantage point, prices have stopped going up. Let's talk a little bit about the, the cycle and seasonal analysis there. I mean, you know, what a, can you give the viewers an, an idea of what the percentages are like in terms of your chance of success at this point in the presidential cycle? I mean, you know, how powerful of a, of a seasonal bias to the upside does that does it give you? I mean, with the setup, it's even stronger. Gotcha. Um, I mean, this sweet spot, this three quarter combination from uh, Q4 of the midterm year to Q2 of the pre-election year, uh, up about 20 percent Dow and S&P. I think it's like 19.3 for the Dow. <clears throat> S&P is 20%, NASDAQ 29%. You throw in a bear market before that, um, it, it jumps those numbers up. Uh, then we have the January trifecta, um, which we hit our, our Santa Claus rally or January barometer plus the first five days all up. Years where that's happened um, alone uh, of the 31, 28 of those years are up, 17.5% average gain. Decent numbers for the 11 months taken out January as well. Again, throw in that bear market the year before, 13 and 0. I mean, um, this best six months, you know, from the midterm year to the pre-election year up 18 and 0. I mean, we get concerned when you get those something and O numbers, you know, that's a, that's a record just dying to get broken. Um, you know, but our forecast call for a bunch of chop in Q1. Yeah. So, you know, we're getting that. And we've got some, some inflation numbers. I mean, we're looking into uh, how the BEA, you know, uh, the PCE uh, um, people, uh, have changed things every year. They do it every January. <laughs> so that January number is on average the biggest jump of all 12 months. So, I mean, my wife bought a dozen eggs for $1.99 last weekend. <laughs> you know, things happen. I mean, the last Q3 and Q4, you could see prices at the register and electric bills and stuff. You know, I have a couple of teenage boys. You can see things, wow, everything's getting more expensive. Yep. Seems to have plateaued. I mean, that's anecdotal. Um, but we've got some technical issues to contend with. You know, we've got some concerns with the December low. Uh, and you, know, you know about that indicator. It's in the almanac. <clears throat> That's being threatened as we speak. Um, but with the trifecta hitting only three years, 52, 66, and 96, did you breach that um, December closing low for the Dow. And got 66 it. was the only bad one. That was the big Vietnam, um, you know, escalation year. Got it. Let me ask you a little bit about sentiment here. You know, I, I saw one of your pieces, you kind of riffed on that 1973 Steel, Steelers wheel song, uh, bears to the left of me, recession fears to the right, and so on. Uh, so what are investors stuck in the middle here with? Uh, you know, what's what's the sentiment? I think, that was, a, like? I think that was a little rascal's reference with uh, um, Alfalfa talking about that, that famous poem, candidates to the left of me, candidates to the right of me. <laughs> it was the arch of the, of the light foot or the march of the light foot brigade or something like that. Yep, so anyway, yep. Um, yeah, everyone's pretty bearish. Uh, we've seen, you know, sentiment come off the, the, the mat, you know, last, you know, end of last year um, and get kind of super bullish, not, not extreme bullish. I mean, I look at investors intelligence um, sentiment. It's a survey, but it's a survey done for many years of people in the business who get paid for their advice. Yeah. So you're not talking about just asking a bunch of people a question. Put call used to be great. 
Um, I think the zero um, data uh, expiry thing has, ch has changed the metrics of put call ratios, these contrary assignment indicators, but um, with all the bears out there, my contrary antenna keep purring, you know, and um, until proven otherwise, you know, we always use the, um, the thought, I always ask the question, if not, it's a, <clears throat> a quote from John Malone in the Almanac, uh, Moses Shapiro of Texas Instruments said, um, said to him, few people have, um, you know, solutions for when their assumptions are wrong. Always ask the question, if not. So, you know, if we're wrong, if I'm wrong on the bullish thing, we've got stops in place. Yeah. It, it means that the sweet spot might get shifted a little bit. I mean, these sweet spot things are averages. So we had a big run from, you know, the lows in October through January. Then we sort of go sideways and chop all the we figure out stuff with Fed and the inflation. And then we get that, you know, rest of the, the pre-election year, you know, power later in the year or even election years of, of, of coming around again, you know, since we had the, <clears throat> the um, you know, un undecided election in 2000 and, and the 08 election years that kind of drove those averages down. So, yeah. yeah. And I guess that, that kind of leads to my natural question uh, would be what, what, what's the fly in the way? I mean, how can you, you know, what, what do you have to see to think, you know, maybe this outlook's wrong and, and we need to be more cautious. Is there anything, you know, news headlines, technical levels, things that you're looking for that, that could disrupt the, uh, the apple cart a little bit? I mean, the news headlines are always there. Um, something goes really amiss where we end up engaging uh, in Ukraine or in, in the Pacific or something. Um, you know, those, those are the kinds of headlines and activities that put in major market bottoms like, you know, Pearl Harbor and, and, and when sure. we entered in 42, that kind of stuff. Um, and 66, as we mentioned earlier, uh, with the big escalate, um, you know, escalation in, in Vietnam. So yeah, a news headline like that, um, but that usually creates a low. And what does the, what does the federal government and the Federal Reserve do when stuff goes wrong for <clears throat> the market and the economy? They throw money at it, okay? Yeah. We put a few more, um, you know, bullets in the chamber with the, the hikes over the past year. So we've got that there. And then technically, which I, um, I appreciate, you know, I'm looking at us dealing with support. You know, there's a bunch of things that are converging right here with the, the 50 day and 200 day moving averages on the main indices like the S&P. Um, there's an uptrend off the, the um, October lows that we're, we're dancing on. There's some pivot point support levels, some, you know, consolidation and, and gaps across the last few months where we had some resistance that we're, you know, threatening with right now. I think lower down, you've got the December lows, which were for the Dow Renier, and then the October lows. I mean, we break through that, most of our stops will have already been hit. And um, we're coming to the end of the, the best six months. We'll get out of that, you know, seasonally. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, there'll be enough We'll be on the sidelines enough to, to be ready for the next move up if things don't, don't go our way. <laughs> Got it. You know, I, I know our Money Show Traders Expo in Las Vegas, you're going to be speaking there. It's in late April. So we're still a couple months out from that. Mm -hmm. Any uh, sneak peek or sort of uh, pearls of wisdom you think you'd, you'd be willing to share ahead of that on maybe what you might be talking about? Well, I mean, it's very convenient that it's in the in April now, the, the, the end of the best six months. I will be talking about, you know, whether you sell in May and go away this year and We'll definitely have some more data points to look at. I mean, there's a strategy we have where, you know, we don't sell in May in the pre-election year. We ride that through because it's the best year of the four-year cycle. So we'll be evaluating that. Um, there'll be some other uh, sector and, and um, you know, seasonal sector trades and some stocks. And we will be talking about all these technicals and just, you know, kind of seeing where we are with the sentiment. A lot of the things we touched on today, we'll be updating that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for your insights and thank you everybody for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this interview. And if you did, you're going to love seeing experts like Jeff in person again at, at the upcoming Money Show Traders Expo. It's scheduled for April 24th to 26th in Vegas. We're going to be bringing together more than 75 top speakers for more than 100 presentations, keynotes, panel discussions, social events, you name it. So click the link in the video description below. You can learn how to join us. And it's going to be at a new venue for 2023, the Paris Las Vegas. So hope to see you there. And again, Jeff, thanks for your time. Looking forward to it, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.